Okay, guys, we are going to work on our practice sheet. So let's look at number four. We're going to do this one together. This is an important one, and it's also one that used to be pretty difficult for me when I was younger. So let's read this together. Jeff bought a bottle of water for $2. He also bought some hot dogs for $3 each. Jeff did not spend more than $14 on the hot dogs in the bottle of water, which inequality can be used to find H, the number of hot dogs that Jeff could have bought. So a couple of ways that you can start this. If this were me, I would assume, even though that's not what it says, just to make sense of it for me, that he did not spend more than $14. So let's say that the most that Jeff has is $14, okay? That's why you're seeing that as the end point of this. He cannot spend more than $14. He can spend $14, which is why on each of these you see an equal sign. Okay, just something to look out for. He can spend more, he cannot spend more than $14, but he can spend $14. Okay, so when I look at this, the first ones that I would get rid of are this and this. Okay. Because what this is saying is that this has to be less than or equal to 14. This has to be less than or equal to 14. Right here, this can equal 14 or it can be less than 14. Okay? That's the best way that I know how to explain it. Okay? Now, he's purchasing, purchasing things, right? He is going to spend $2. So, I mean, just think if you're going to the store... Wherever you are, you're going to spend $2, and you're going to spend $3 for each of the hot dogs, right? And remember, each tells us a number next to a variable. Do you remember that? Each is a number next to a letter. Now, it doesn't give us it afterward, but we know what it is. It is for each hot dog, okay? So look over here, and hopefully you can tell G is correct. $3 per hot dog plus $2 will give you, it has to be less than or equal to 14, okay? So look to see whenever you're doing problems like this, what are ones you can get rid of first? What are things that make sense to you? This part may, may make more sense to you than the inequality part. I can tell you for me, that's probably the case, okay? Um, but that's why I started with the inequality, because some of you it may make more sense, okay? Please come and ask me if you have a question on this. We will try to do another one in the coming weeks, okay? Number five, I'm not going to solve it, but I am going to model something for you. Find the area of the triangle. Here's my triangle area, so that means I'm going to go to my formula chart. which has all of my formulas on it. So area, area of a triangle is half the H. Guys, please, 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 it makes me so happy when I see you write your formula. This is such a good strategy for math and it will carry over into science, okay? So please make sure you write your formula. Now I'm also gonna plug these in just so that you know what is what. So if you remember, we said your base and height have to form a right angle, okay? So we want to make sure we are looking clearly at this, okay? So we don't want to add these two, okay? We don't want to add these two because this part is not actually part of the triangle. If I used 11 and 6.7, then that would be this entire thing, including this little piece that's missing. So, guys, our base is 11. It's the actual base of the triangle, okay? I cannot use 7. That does not form a right angle, okay? We are going to use 6.7, okay? And I know that it's not actually touching this, but it's okay. That's where the right angle is. That is how high it is from where the base is, okay? So your job is to multiply 11 times 6.7 or 
that may be easier. Uh, it's the same thing, but just in case. Multiply that. Once you do that, you still need to take half. So you'll take this number and divide it by 2. Okay? Please make sure your answer makes sense. If I was just estimating this, 6 times 11 is 66. 6 times 7 is 77. That's what I'm going to get when I multiply. Now when I take half, half of 66 is 33. So I'm thinking somewhere between 33 and maybe 38. Somewhere in there should be half. This should be about your answer. Okay? That'll help you locate where your decimal should be. Okay. Or let you know if you put your decimal in the right location. Okay, number six. At one stop gaming, the regular price of a video game is $64. But it is on sale this week for $48. So regular, guys, remember O, T-W-O, but it is on sale for $48. What is the percent discount? And remember, percent discount means percent of change. I'm going to reiterate to you that, guys, you will see this one on star something similar to this you will see okay so this hopefully you know is a percent problem we do not have a percent though right so that means we go to our secondary method which is is over of equals percent over 100. so i'm going to change this up a little bit how i normally do it but you're, you're going to see so I do know of is TWO, right? Total whole original. Okay, so I already know that. I'm going to erase this if it lets me. Total whole original is 64. Do not put 48 on top. Okay, you have to figure out how much it changes by. You have to figure out how much that price is changing by. Please make sure you do that. Okay. So subtract. I cannot emphasize this enough. Please make sure you subtract to find how much it changes by. What do you get when you subtract? And I'm getting 16 once you regroup. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in here. This will be 16. Remember, this is how much it changes by. Okay, think before you do these. Percent, let's get rid of that because that's what we're solving for, right? So I'm just going to put an X there. And then this is a good chance for you to practice cross multiplying. Okay, so I want you to try to cross multiply this. On number seven, it says Austin took out a loan for a car for $9,000 and was charged a 5.5% simple interest, really should say 5.5% simple interest rate. He was charged a rate of 5.5%. He paid the loan off in full at the end of four years. We only want to know the interest. Guys, please remember, some of you really are doing a good job on this, but sometimes you forget one of the numbers. So just remember, simple interest is I equals PRT, I party, principal times rate times time. Remember, for the rate, change the percent to a decimal, one, two, and then, of course, we will end up multiplying. So there is your hint for this problem. Multiply carefully. Okay. I'm not going to do number eight with you, except to remind you that we are doing circumference. Find the formula. Don't do pi r squared. That's area. And I'm going to remind you what is 18 on this. Is it radius or is it diameter? Hopefully you know it's diameter. Diameter is the bigger word. Diameter is the bigger distance. Okay, we are going to talk about number nine. A farm, and by, guys, this comes from a star, okay? This is an actual star question. 
A farmer plants crops on 48 acres of land. The circle graph shows the percentages of land used for some of the different types of crops. Okay? So, based on the circle graph, how many acres of land are used for corn? So notice, corn is the only one I don't have a percent for, correct? So, hopefully you know the total of my circle adds up to 100%, okay? So I need to find the missing percent, 40 plus 20 plus 10. Forty plus twenty plus ten plus something gives me a hundred. I could set this up as an equation if I wanted, but I'm not going to. So zero, four plus two, six plus one is seven. Okay, so these add up to seventy percent, which means this missing piece, which looks like they kind of made it to scale, is going to be thirty percent. Okay, so I would get that by doing a hundred percent take away 70%. And when you subtract that, you get 30%. Okay? So, please make sure that you don't grid 30. That's not what it's saying. It's saying how many acres. It doesn't say what is the percent. It says how many acres. Well, 30% of the 48 acres, right? 30% of the 48 acres are used for corn. So we will take this and do what we know to do. Change the percent to a decimal and multiply. Now, this is supposed to be a grid answer. I don't have a grid for you, but you multiply that, okay? Okay, the last one on number 10, for some reason, if you have a hard copy of this, this pi symbol, I think it was the pi symbol, didn't stay. It changed into something weird, okay? So circle the rational, circle the numbers that are rational numbers, okay? Guys, I've told you, basically every single number you know is rational, except one. So there's one thing here that's not rational, which fall outside of those concentric circles, remember natural, whole, integers, that's where we get into the negatives, and then rational, which contains all of these, okay? Only one of these does not fit in here. So I want you to cross that off and circle the rest.